Michel. Hello. The economic situation in China seems to worry a lot of people. We've seen that the Chinese economy is slowing down these past few months, so, but they have huge cash reserves. So why are we worried about China today? That is true. These huge reserves are actually an, an efficient tool to fight any financial crisis. But in the same time, people are discovering there is a huge financial credit which is hidden in the non-financial uh, sector, what we call the uh, shadow banking uh, sector. So how is that? Well, the non-banks have created a huge amount of money for the last two years. It has doubled. Now, this credit is about 80% of the GDP. That's a huge amount of money. And it has been invested in different financial products in, in the same time. So are you saying that the Chinese are making the same mistakes that the Americans did a few years ago, th all of those excesses? Absolutely, same excesses and same banking mistakes. The banks and the non-banks have created the products invested these products and lend the money to different entities and now these entities are no more able to give back the money. So there is a huge contagion to hold the whole system. So it's sort of like in Europe, this sort of vicious circle link between banks and the financial public finances? I exactly the same and with the same fundamental questions. Shall we save or let down these entities? And that's a fundamental question because the message you give to the system is very important. And, and, and it is very important to decide, shall I save in order to avoid a systemic risk or shall I let the entity go down to give the, an example to the system? Yes, that's not easy. And this week we've seen that China has decided to save some of the creditors of one of these financial products. Do you think that was a good decision? Well, that was a good message to the markets. No Lehman Brothers in China. But that was a wrong decision because this product was a very small product. So, but I'm sure in the month ahead, China will have more occasions and more opportunities to show to the world and to the creditors how they're going to manage these problems. You compare China with the Eurozone, but it will be a lot easier for China. Yeah, it will be easier because uh, in China, there is one man deciding for everything. The prime minister has all the power to solve this crisis. So the crisis will be shorter uh, compared to the Eurozone crisis, definitely. Um, and probably uh, this crisis will be an opportunity for the prime minister to say to the provinces, OK, you have a problems, you have financial problems, I will help you. But in the same time, if I help you, you will have to obey to me and you will have to follow closely my new economic and ethical plan. But with these conditions, we should not see China's economic growth uh, go rapidly. No, it will that's be right. pretty yeah. slow. The economic growth will remain moderate mm -hmm. because this adjustment is a necessary adjustment. Uh, and actually, it is in line with the plan which has been decided a year ago. China will stimulate consumption. China won't stimulate any more financial investment and speculative investments. So you still recommend caution when it comes to the Chinese market? Well, actually, I'm a bit more optimistic because uh, this week we've seen massive turmoil in all emerging market currencies. But we've seen the central banks from Turkey to India to Argentina deciding to raise interest rates. So the meaning is central banks want to control now the problems. That's a positive sign. I agree. Uh, perspectives are not very enthusiastic in terms of economic growth. However, in terms of pricing, valuation is becoming a bit more attractive in equities, in bonds, and that means this crisis is creating an opportunity to start again to invest in all of these assets. Thank you, Michel. Thank you.